Having taken command of the USS Pioneer, we are stepping into the midst of the Klingon Federation War, and our first proper assignment, a simple resupply run. Admiral Kensington calls us up with the details. Our victory at Pryor's World was hard fought, and we took a thrashing in the process. We've gained some momentum from this win, but our position at Pryor's could become tenuous if the Klingon should return for a rematch. Captain Gabriel Lorca of the USS Baran is on station at Pryor's World, and he's requested assistance while they handle mop-up operations there. I believe you and your crew are ready for action, yes? Lorca is a fine captain, tough but fair, with years of experience in the field. Follow his lead and you'll do well. Report to him at Pryor's World for further instructions. Kensington out. Pryor's World is in the Sellers sector of the Beta Quadrant and is an outermost world within the core Federation territory, making it a prime target for the Klingons because if they could seize it, then they would have a foothold into our heartland, and it would be even more difficult to keep them at bay. Its government is a constitutional republic, headed by a planetary governor, Marcus Valeri, and a prime minister, Shivani O'Leary, and had a population of 17.2 million. Starfleet cannot afford to withdraw its forces from the system, so it maintains a presence there at all times, headed by Captain Lorca of the USS Baran, and they have just fended off another attack from the Klingons. And yes, spoilers for Discovery throughout, this is the real Gabriel Lorca before he was replaced. We arrive in the system and everything seems quiet on our scans. There's some minor ionic interference from the system's frequent storms, but the run here was uninterrupted, which makes for a nice if welcome change, but one that would also make for a dull video. We can see three Federation ships, so we approach the Shinano first. This is the USS Cicada. Switch to frequency 228.7 to adjust for ion storm interference. This is the Shinano. Advise keeping shields up. Cloaked Klingon vessels are still testing our defences. Ah, so it is not as secure as things may seem. The sooner we can find a way to break the cloaking screens, the better. So we abide by the advice given to us, and we keep our guard up alert for trouble. No doubt the Klingons have eyes on us right now, and are probably weighing up with our options to attack us, denying the Prior's World fleet their resupply. The USS Shinano is a Nimitz class, named after the Japanese Yamato class battleship of the same name, and this will get a future variation in the 25th century as one of the Yard 39 refits, called the Europa class. Let's do this quickly. Don't want our shields down for long. Thanks. Our supplies were low after retaking Pryor's world. One more assault and we would have been at critical levels in several key resources. I expect the Cicada is waiting for supplies too. I hope you have what they need. Yeah, it's mostly hardware and components, but also 87 rubber ducks. The Cicada is an Engel class, and apart from that I don't have much on it, except that Cicadas are noisy bugs that spend a lot of their time living underground and pop up once every decade or so to mate. Lowering shields now. We are ready to receive supplies. Engineering has confirmed that all expected hardware has been delivered. Thank you. We shall begin repairs at once. Our computer systems have received significant damage from Klingon assaults. I believe the Baran is waiting for you to report in, so I will keep you no longer. 
the battle that just took place here was Operation Repost, which I'll go back into and do in the future, probably as a holodeck simulation. But the retaking of Pryor's world from Klingon hands was headed by the USS Buran, and managed to not only win, but capture several Klingon prisoners. The Buran is a Cardenas class, and unusual in the fact that it has the bridge at the fore of the vessel, not the top of the saucer. As we approach, we are hailed by the XO. This is Commander Ellen Landry of the USS Buran. Welcome to Pryor's World. Commander Landry gets a lot of spotlight in these missions, which is pretty good. But I was hoping to speak to Captain Lorca. The captain has requested that you transport over to the Buran to speak in person. Truth be told, we're not certain our hailing frequencies are completely secure. It's, um, it's a long story. Let's just say the Klingons had a few tricks up their sleeve during battle. You're worried about eavesdroppers? Very well then, I shall beam over. So a focus of these missions are three characters that end up in the shows. Well, actually, technically only one of them we meet in the show. Captain Gabriel Lorca, Commander Patel and Commander Landry, the last of which was done a dirty in the show several times, so it's good to get some backstory on her here at least. Nice to finally meet you face to face. I'm Captain Gabriel Lorca. Welcome to the Buran. This is my first officer, Commander Ellen Landry. Sorry to hear about Captain Schaefer. He was one of our best. Agreed. A damn fine captain. Though from what we've heard about what happened to Corvan, his ship's in good hands. Ah, and my somewhat tardy Chief of Security, Amna Patel. Uh, apologies, Captain. Welcome aboard. We appreciate the assistance. Engineering's this way, if you'll follow me. What took you so long? Ah, <sighs> you try booking a reception hall during prime wedding season. <laughs> I'm lucky to be alive. My warrior. Braver than a hundred Klingons. Kapla! We better catch up. Uh, before the captain throws us in the brig with the Klingons. We've been mopping up here after our scrap with the Klingons. I heard about Operation Repost. Shame I couldn't take part. The Klingons did not surrender Pryor's world lightly. Yeah, I heard they were pretty dug in. Cleaning up the planet-based missile launchers was satisfying. I mean, I suppose there was no chance of us repurposing them for our use. The Buran is currently holding some Klingon prisoners of war. Prisoners we plan to deliver to a secure location before we ran into a snag. Lieutenant Kerwin, I have someone I'd like you to meet. So, we've been brought to engineering. Wait, why have we been brought to engineering? Welcome aboard, thanks for lending us a hand. Mind taking a look at something here? I'm analyzing some issues with the Buran's critical systems, and a fresh perspective might shed some light. Certainly, Lieutenant Kerwin, but I'm not an engineer, I'm a tactical officer. I mean, I'll take a look. Somehow the Klingons infected our computer systems with a particularly nasty virus during the battle. Another house Mokai trick by the looks of it. It's in several key systems, sensors, shields, weapons. Ugh. Right now, we can't rely on any of those remaining at operational status. If they come back for a rematch, we could wind up blind and defenseless. So this is how we can help. The viruses in the shield subroutines, sensor systems and weapon arrays. And depending on our specialty, we can attempt to purge a system that we have been taught to utilize. In Hale's case, it's weapons for tactical. Ah, uh, the virus has really dug into our tactical systems. We lose targeting, can't even power up the emitters or launchers. At that point, the only weapon in our arsenal is harsh language. And that won't go very far in a fight with the Klingons. <laughs> Their entire language is harsh. Well, that's probably down to the fact that they have a different vocal cord structure. You know what, never mind. Let me see what we're dealing with. So, this basically serves as a demonstration of the game's mini-games that frequently pop up. So, first we jury rig a redundancy in to access the systems. If the virus tries to lock out a weapon, they should still work. However, in order to do that, we did technically have to bypass security protocols. Which is not a great position to be in, but hey, it's better than having no weapons at all. So we've created an alternate way to access the weapons, now let's actually secure those as well. Nice work. Tactical will need to make adjustments, but that should block the virus nicely. Finally, we make sure that we still have an IFF system, which differentiates friend from foe. 
What the? We just lost port deflectors. Bridge to Captain. Klingon vessels decloaking. Lork at a bridge. I'm on my way. Captain, internal sensors show multiple Klingon transporter signals in your vicinity. Maybe I should have done shields. All hands, repel borders. Ow! Fortunately, the Boran security team was quicker on the draw than I am, and they managed to deal with the Klingon intruders quickly. However, even though the engineering room is safely secured, we hear the sounds of the firefight going on outside, and sure enough there are still Klingons in the corridors around us too. After a couple of well-placed grenades, the corridor falls silent, but the Klingons are on board. Lork at a bridge, we need those shields back. Do what you can to keep our port side away from the Klingons. Kerwin, I want you to head up there and give them a hand with the shields. Uh, Captain, are we staying here to defend engineering? No, I think it's time we went on the offensive. Landry, Patel, lead the way. Chief, get us to the armory. On it. On the way to the armory, we come across a team that was not quite as lucky with its encounter. Captain to sickbay, we have wounded on deck 17. We're on our way, Captain. That's a nice detail that I can't imagine Mira Lorca would have done. Take one of these phaser rifles. We just finished modifications on them from data we gathered during the Priors World fighting. <laughs> the Klingons are in for a little surprise. Thank you, Ensign. Don't mind if I do. Bridge to Captain. The Klingons hit the brig and released their buddies. Looks like they're heading toward the shuttle bay. They're gonna make a break for it, sir. Ah, so this was a rescue mission. Lorca to bridge, acknowledged. We're en route. To Pev, Landry, Patel, take the lead. Everyone else, you're with me. Let's move! Arming up and stepping outside, the sound of disruptor fire catches our ear again. So, while the Federation considers capture of prisoners preferable to killing, the Klingons consider it an insult. While we think of it as compassionate and only moral to spare lives where we can, well, the Klingons see it as not only being defeated, but being denied an honourable death, leading to the ridicule of their family and loss of a place in their afterlife. Needless to say, they place a lot on rescue missions, as it allows the captive to work off their dishonour and redeem themselves in the future. Things take a serious turn as we enter the next corridor though. We are immediately ambushed from both sides. Cover me. Uh, Patel, give me a hand with this. Uh, there's no time. Captain, you need to go. That's not how we operate, Commander. We don't leave people behind. It's clear. Help her. Thought I lost you there. Fortunately, the captain had other ideas. Nice shot back there. Glad you had our backs. We need to move. Can you stand? Mm. Well, I'll manage. It's not as bad as it looks. I don't think I'll tell him I forgot to flick on the stun setting. In Discovery, Landry showed incredible loyalty to Borger, unaware that it was the wrong one. And instances like this serve to illustrate why he was a good man who would put himself in harm's way if it meant not leaving anyone behind. Bridge to Captain. Shuttle bay access is locked, and the hangar doors are starting to open. Ah, it's that damned Klingon virus again. Bridge, this is the Captain. Prepare the tractor beam, in case we fail. So he is still stern, commanding, and calculating, but he has that Starfleet core that the Discovery Lorca lacked. He takes the time to care for his crew where he can, first in the corridor calling in a med team, then with Landry, and then even with simply thanking us for saving him. He does share some similarities with his counterpart however, as I said he is still calculating and tactically minded, preparing contingencies in case we fail, and he is a capable badass in the scrap. Basically, I'm really happy with this portrayal of Lorca in STO which I guess makes sense considering what happens to him. Damn, it's even in the door systems. I'll handle this. Bam, got it! 
As the shuttle bay doors fly open, we can see the Klingon prisoners driving a Starfleet team back into cover. The Klingons have made it all the way to our shuttles, seems we arrived just in time. The car took a track. We are preparing to depart the Baran. Prepare for our arrival. Not today. Not on my ship. Change your plans. Kill their captain. Then we leave. You'll have to get through me first! Lorca to bridge. The prisoners are secure. Give me a status report. Sir, the Klingon vessels just went under cloak. They'll be back. Count on it. Fortunately, this time I did put the stun on. None of these prisoners are dead. We need to get the Klingon prisoners secured. Unfortunately, our holding facilities here are compromised. Under the circumstances, I think we'll need to transfer the prisoners to your ship. I did not sign up for a prisoner transfer, but... Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. I think you'll agree we can't risk dropping our shields to use the transporters. You'll have to take a shuttle. It's a little old-fashioned, but if the Klingons are here to rescue their people, they won't risk firing on you. Your ship, on the other hand, will be a target. Be ready for anything. Agreed. We'll be ready, Captain. All right. These Klingons wanted a ride in a shuttle. Load them up. Transferring them via shuttle is a solid plan. With cloaked Klingons circling, we daren't risk lowering the shields, especially with the Baran suffering from the virus. Who knows if we take them down, if they'd be able to get them back up again. And as mentioned, Klingons see captivity as dishonourable, and firing on our prisoners here would forever deny them redemption. One of these Klingons is Akar, a Special Forces Captain of House Mulkai. He looks familiar, something about the eyes. My team will handle the prison transfer to your vessel. I'll have our security chief contact yours to sort out the details. Very well, Commander. Excellent. Are you ready to finish boarding procedures and head out? Good. You made it. Afraid I have some bad news. We're picking up some photon decay heading our way. My people believe it's coming from cloaked Klingon vessels, and I'm inclined to agree. Get ready for a fight. Well, at least they waited for me to get back to the Pleiades before attacking. All ships, decloak and renew the attack. The vessels decloak, and they were right on top of us. This is the Shinano. We are under heavy fire and need assistance. Moran to Cicada. Move to support the Shinano. Acknowledge, Moran. A new Marine to support position. Cicada pulls away following Lorca's orders. You fight well, Sol. The wreck of your vessel will make a fine memorial. The Klingons are trying to split us up! Klingon forces indeed have driven a wedge between us and the Cicada. Like wolves trying to break up a herd of buffalo. All ships, circle the wagons. Watch out for each other, and we'll get through this. With an incoming barrage of plasma torpedoes, we present our starboard side to save our four shields the impact. turn back to help out the Baran, which is also taking heavy fire and still suffering from the effects of the virus. Good stuff. The harder you fight, the greater my glory. Just as it looks like we were finally winning, a new wave of Klingon vessels enters the system. One of them is even a Bortus Beer class warship. These vessels are the closest in silhouette to the yet to be invented Klingon D7 and generally serve as the vessel of choice for fleet commanders. Noticing a weakening of the shields of a nearby Klingon ship, we break off our attack on the supposed flagship to lay some crippling hits into the unprotected back of the Klingon Sec battlecruiser. With that, several more circling bird of preys are destroyed by our fleet as our defence of Pryor's world is upheld. 
Moran has taken crippling damage. It was just in time too, as the USS Boran finally succumbs to its damage. However, it is not destroyed and no Klingons stand left to finish it off, which means repair teams do their job. Boran has restored main power. Nice work, Captain. Looks like the Klingons aren't finished with us at Pryor's world. Glad you were in the neighborhood. Things could have gone pear-shaped if you weren't. Thank you, Captain. I will pass this along to Starfleet Command. Keep them advised. I'm sure that'll look good in your after-action report. Might put a little dent in my sterling reputation, but I'll manage. That said, we're not out of the woods just yet. I'll let my first officer fill you in on the details. Of course, you've got repairs to see to. This is Landry. As you've seen, the Varan is needed here at Pryor's World. And her brig is no longer secure. I'm afraid your ship is going to have to facilitate this prison transfer. I figured that'd probably be the case. Um, what's the destination? The destination is classified, I'm afraid. I have the coordinates in a secure device, which, with your permission, I'll bring aboard with my team. This is somewhat irregular, Commander. I have a good team here. I don't disagree, Captain, but we're at war. Things have a tendency to get irregular in situations like this. Some of our prisoners are high-ranking members of the House Mokai. The secrets they know are important to the Klingons, even more so to Starfleet. We need to get them into a high-security facility as soon as we can. I guess with the compromised systems, understood. I'd like to send Commander Landry and a team of you to assist on this. Call it a joint effort. But it's still your ship and your command. Agreed? Agreed. Uh, we'll make it happen, Captain. Although I would welcome the Commander's input. I mean, I was a cadet a couple of weeks ago. Oh, and one last thing. Landry's on loan. She's a damn fine officer and one of a kind. I do expect her back intact as soon as you're done, Captain. The shuttle, on the other hand, you can keep. We got plenty of those. Oh, it will occupy pride of place in my shuttle bay, sir. We'll be back soon, Captain. Pleadies out. Okay, prepare to receive Landry's away team. So, with the Boran saved for now, and a lull in the repeated Pryor's World assaults, we prepare our Klingon charges and Lorca's Exo for the trip to a classified prison. House Mokai is renowned in the Empire for its subterfuge and spy work, so the intelligence these men hold may be valuable. But for now, I'll leave it there, as there is a bit of a tonal shift for the next half of the mission. My team is on board, Captain. With your permission, I'll take the helm for this trip. I know the way, after all. Ah, uh, very well, Commander. Navigation is yours. So, thank you for watching this part of the Star Trek Online story series as we continue to explore its ever-evolving narrative. Until the next part, thanks again for watching. I've been Rick, and I'll see you again. Until then, goodbye.